If you know where to look, the University of Adelaide is an Aladdin's cave for collectors. From the hundreds of antiquities in the Classics Department's crypt to the thousands of rare rocks in the Earth Sciences Museum. But they're not for sale. If they were though, they'd cost a small fortune. Some of these specimens here, mineral collectors would give their right arm to get some of this into their collection. Mm. And we've got it. It's fabulous. When former Victorian Professor Ian Plymer took up his appointment at the university, he was gobsmacked to discover just what has been collected there since the 1880s. A lot of this was derived from Mawson trading material around the world because at the time when Mawson had rocks from Antarctica, no one could get them. So he could trade some of the best stuff. We just had nothing like that at Melbourne. This is one of the greatest university museums, but you haven't seen anything yet. This is where we keep... He then took me downstairs to the Fort Knox of Rocks. Well, this is the crypt. This is where we keep thousands of really unique, rare specimens, if not the greatest treasure in Australia. And it's this piece of Mars. How much would it be worth if it was auctioned, say, at Sotheby's? Uh, this would be probably worth tens of millions. You just don't get pieces of Mars on Earth. This is more valuable than a bucket full of gold. It's more valuable than a hat full of diamonds. This is an extraterrestrial visitor. Antarctic explorer Douglas Mawson was also the head of the geology department at the university, and he's thought to have swapped it when he was in Egypt for a rock from Antarctica. Dropped onto Earth on the 28th of June, 1911, and it vaporised a poor, innocent dog, minding its own business in the village of Nakla in Egypt. And it was decades later, after the 1976 Viking probe, that it was finally discovered to be a piece of the red planet. Now it's being used to fire up the next generation of geologists. And I use it to try to inspire them about how the planet works. And the practical is called fondling an extraterrestrial. It's the first and probably the last time in their life they'll touch something from another planet. We can't go... While Professor Plymer might argue his Mars rock is the university's greatest treasure, others beg to differ. The head of electrical music, Stephen Whittington, says if it's rare rock you want, then the greatest treasure has to be this Moog synthesizer. This collection of knobs and wires made the sounds that defined a generation. It's essentially the first commercially viable electronic music synthesizer produced, and this is the third example of that off the production line. This is really the instrument that started off a whole wave of musical developments that have led to completely new genres of music that we have today that involve sampling techniques, and for example, in techno and hip hop. South Australian entrepreneur Derek Jolly imported the space age Moog synthesizer in the swinging 60s. It was central to his grand plan to make Adelaide's Melbourne Street the music recording centre of the Southern Hemisphere. He hoped his studio would match Abbey Road. It was such a revolutionary device back in the late 60s that apparently even the Beatles wanted to see it. Legend has it they made another trip to Adelaide after their extraordinary visit in 1964. There is a story, which I actually can't verify, that John Lennon and Paul McCartney did come here and uh, played with this instrument. Either way, it's a nice story, but one thing's clear. Derek Jolly was unable to convince others to share his vision of Melbourne Street becoming the Abbey Road of the South. So as a result of that, he relinquished this instrument and it came to the university around 1969, 1970. When it comes to music, along with anything else these days, little can be done without one of these. And Francis Vaughan says the missing link to the laptop is an amazing antique computer, also at the university. It was started being built about 1961, it was finished about 1963 and um, entirely built locally and one of the most amazing artefacts that you're going to see. And how much did it cost? Well the initial grant to start building it was £100,000. The laptop's ancestor cost millions in today's money and although it's now gathering dust in a basement, it's hoped that one day soon it will be on public display as a technological treasure of national and international significance.
it's an exemplar of what how it could be done locally with a group, small group of dedicated guys. Back in 1960, computers were very, very rare. There were very, very few being made. IBM were only just beginning to get into the market. And at just this time, this small group of engineers decided that they could make a contribution, sat down, got the money and built this, which was, at its time, a major world first. Called Cirrus by its creators, they tried to raise more money to commercialise the cutting edge technology, but it was not to be, and the rest is history. It was quite a few years ahead of the curve, and it does represent to some extent a missed opportunity. But Cirrus is a relative junior in the university's collection of scientific treasures. Long before Cirrus, the father and son scientific duo, William and Lawrence Bragg, were chalking up some impressive firsts. And this is an X-ray tube that was used by Bragg Senior to demonstrate the power of X-rays. William Bragg was the professor of physics here at the University of Adelaide. And he was professor here for 22 years until he left in 1908. And it was back in 1896 when Professor William Bragg drew huge crowds as he used this glass tube to give South Australia's first public demonstration of the latest scientific development, the X-ray. That X-ray technology would lead Lawrence and William Bragg to a discovery that changed the course of science and won them both the Nobel Prize for Physics. They developed the ability to look at uh, the structures of materials and actually determine where an atom is positioned within uh, a molecule. And uh, many of the modern breakthroughs in medicine and uh, many of those things have been generated by the work that was done by the Braggs. Although the work of the Braggs was so important, it even led the way to the discovery of DNA, it hardly settles the argument. Each guardian of one of the university's treasures is certain his is the greatest prize of all. But it does seem that one is a bit more certain than the others. There's absolutely no doubt this piece of Mars is the most prized item in the university. Whatever eclectica people have in the university, you can go and buy it. You can get another one. But you can't get another piece of Mars. Yeah.